Michael Allen Rawson, voice actor extraordinaire, uh, also known sometimes when he whips out his ukulele as Big Bill Brody. And uh, we may be able to get a little song or a ditty out of him tonight. Anybody want to hear that? be able to. Maybe. <laughs> oh, beg me. <laughs> So, you know, I, I figured we could get, we needed more Mike. And so when Mike's here with me tonight, uh, maybe John might show up a little bit later. But he's got so many dildos and vibrators to clean up in panels, too, right now. Um, so once he gets over here, we'll bring him up. We're just going to play. We're going to have some fun. We're going to laugh. We're going to joke. But before we do, I want to tell you about my son, Max. Now, my son, Max, he was here tonight. Some of you may have seen him. Uh, unfortunately, he had to go back to the house because he's packing, and he's heading back to the Savannah College of Art and Design in the morning. <clears throat> Represent. And he's been working on animation, and uh, I had hoped to have the stop motion he was working on here to show you guys tonight. However, it wasn't ready. <clears throat> so, it was a group project. How many people have had to work on a group project? How many people loved working on a group project? All those hands go back down, <laughs> except for one. Down they go. Yeah, if you have a vision and you have an idea of what you want to do and you have a particular voice and suddenly you're working on a group project with a lot of other people, you have to then fight for your vision and fight for your choice, even with people who have no vision. Uh, how many people have experienced that? Everyone who had their hands up before. So there we go. Um, there's ladies and gentlemen in the back. I want you to turn around and yell, hi, Farad. <laughs> Farad was here with us earlier today. Good Farad! to see you, sir. If anybody has a seat next to them up around the front, I think over this side, Farad, or someone wants to have him sit next to you, uh, he has not been uh, accused or arrested of anything uh, recently. Oh, there's a seat up in the front for you, Farad, if you'd like. Come on down. So, uh, so my son Max did this last year. Some of you may have already seen it. However, it's one of my favorite pieces he's done. He does everything from 2D animation, 3D animation. He does claymation, stop motion. This one he used, uh, created with a green screen and was in by himself. Now, they gave him the camera down at the school and they gave him the uh, microphones to work with. Unfortunately, the microphones and the camera were incompatible together. And he went and tried to go pick up more equipment to make it work, and none of it would. So he decided to MacGyver it. And anybody out here who wants to MacGyver things, uh, you know what it's like. So what he did, I said, do you have voice memo on your iPhone? He did. I said, take your, um, your, your headset with the microphone. Put it in, bring it up to your collar, and if you pay attention, you'll see the little microphone right near his collar taped up under the shirt. And the sound isn't the best in the world, but what he was able to do was record it, get it in in time to get the equipment back. He had a green screen in his dorm room, which once they put it up on the wall, it remained there until the end of their year. So um, he did a great job with it. He synced it up, and it was one of my favorite things, and it gives you an idea of his warped sense of humor. How many people would like to see The Fun Show by Max Johnson? All right. Guys, are we able to lower the lights for just a moment? Lower down the lights, just a moment. Any way to do that? Turn down the lights. I'm not certain. Anybody? No, that was the Draw mic, not the, the mic. Don't lower down the mic. Just lower down the lights. Is Cuddle that the up light at your favorite I, My mic is gone, and I'm losing my voice. No. Tell them I'm here. Okay, this mic has stopped working over here, so I'm going to borrow mics for a few, but hopefully you guys can bring my microphone back up because I'm losing my voice, and I don't want to do that. I have a Capitals game to call on Sunday. Your Washington Cap. See, it's not going to work. I know. I can't take tomorrow if we have Voice of Palooza tomorrow, but uh, I will sleep tonight. And I will gargle with uh, antifreeze. So, anybody back there know how to turn some of the lights down so we can show something on the screen? Trying. Trying. All right, well, I appreciate the feedback. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to be taking some questions and answers in a few. And, uh, Michael, you have, let me see if my mic's working again. If my mic is no longer working, this one. 
this one. Can you turn on the fucking mic? Thank you very much. <laughs> turn it on. There we go. That's great. That's great. Right. Sorry about Both that. Both of them now? Yeah. It's, like, my, it's like when my kids are growing up, you're like, hey, could you clean your room? Hey, come on, do your dad a favor and clean the room. Maybe you just clean the room. Clean your fucking room! And then the room gets clean. And then they're like, Dad cusses all the time. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, we'll need that definitely for later. Apparently we're uh, stuck with the lights. We're still checking. So let me see. Focus as best you can on this screen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Max Johnson and the fun show. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. See, I'm actually in a bit of a pickle right now. I was about to finish a drawing here in my sketchbook. <laughs> when I lost my pen. Do you think you can help me find it? <laughs> Great. Where should we start looking? Oh, hey there, mysterious stain. Do you think you can help me find my pen? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that was very racist and not helpful to me at all. <laughs> Who else can I check with? Oh, I know. I'll summon Mr. Blobby. Sharuka, are you a good person? Shitolashi. Oh, hey, Mr. Blobby. Have you. Have you seen my magic pen? You have? Where? Let's follow him. <laughs> oh, wow. Look, guys. It's the Raft of Medusa, a painting depicting a group of shipwrecks who starved at sea. Let's see if they know where my pen is. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Do you know where my magic pen is? What? Where did you come from? Please, please help me. I'm, I'm so cold and hungry. Please, help me. No, no, no. I'm looking for my magic pen. Have you seen it? Magic pen? Please, if I don't get food soon, I'm going to have to eat my own son. Please, please help me. Hmm. This guy's not very much help. I guess I'll go back to the house. No, wait. Take me with you, please. Oh, Lord, forgive me for this. I guess I'll never find my magic pen. <laughs> Mr. Stain, you had my magic pen this whole time? You son of a bitch. Give me that shit. <laughs> Finally, I can finish my picture in my sketchbook. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Perfect. It's famous actor John Lovitz with the body of a crab. <laughs> Thanks for coming in this week, guys. It's been a real treat. For next week's episode, I'm gonna burn in hell. Mr. Blobby, shave me down. <laughs> All right. Well, that should give you a little idea of just uh, how damaged my son has become over the years. Would anybody like to see one more? Yeah! Let's see. We've got Lost Dog, Low Fuel, Low Fuel. All right. Here we go.
Sí. Sharon, sing us a song. Uh, I'm Wes. Uh, I do voice, not as much like that, although I did get a call from somebody once wanting me to give uh, their child voice lessons. It was a wrong number. Uh, I was like, I, I, I don't, what, what kind of voice lessons? Do you want it to be character work? And I said, no, 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 opera. I'm like, well, <laughs> really is uh, a wrong number. However, if you wanted to hear a song, we happen to have Mike Rawson sitting here, who has occasionally been known as Sharon. Yeah. Only because I'm sharing my music with you. So who would like to hear Mike bring out his ukulele? Mike, oh, what, what, what are you in the mood for? Twist my arm. Well, the Christmas season has just passed. And uh, I got a visit from Whitebeard. He, uh, he came down, stole all my presents, and, <laughs> and um, snuck back up the chimney. And that was amazing because I don't have a chimney. <laughs> but uh, I do have a Christmas song. And um, if you don't know, one of the many people in my head, they're all friendly. Uh, <laughs> mostly. Uh, one of these guys is Big Bill Brody, and he's the uh, cosmic opposite of Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim was a big, tall, big-nosed, clean-shaven guy with a lot of curly hair and a high, twittery voice. Uh, me, I'm a sawed-off little runt, as they say in so uh, scientific circles. And um, I'm rather follically challenged, and I don't on the have chin. a big nose. So anyway... I'm, instead of Tiny Tim, Big Bill Brody. I'm the savior of the day, even if the day doesn't need saving. So Big Bill, Big Bill is a big kid. He's a grown up, but he still believes in Santa Claus. So he wrote a letter to Santa. That's why I say Big Bill wrote this song. I take no credit for it, and I think you'll find out why. It's called A Letter to Santa. actually starts in another key. <clears throat> Dear Santa Claus, this is Billy. Remember me? Oh, I know. It's been a long, long time. Well, I grew up. I'm 63. I never stopped believing in you, but I kind of outgrew all the toys. And I know you read every letter you get from all ages of girls and boys. So Santa, 
I don't need no games this year and I no longer ride a bike But maybe if you could see your way clear There is one thing I really would like Oh, I want a hooker for Christmas That's the only present that I want A real pretty tall girl, a real city call girl And not some ordinary contemporary harlot I see her wearing Christmas stockings Wrapped up in a big red bow Oh, I want a hooker for Christmas Santa So give me a ho, ho, ho Everybody now, I want a hooker for Christmas That's the only present that I want A real pretty tall girl, a real city call girl And not some ordinary contemporary harlot I see her wearing Christmas stockings Wrapped up in a big red bow Oh, I want a hooker for Christmas Santa So give me, give me the ho, ho, ho Ho, 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 ho Thank you very much. Well, and I strongly advise every, each and every one of you to go out and buy a ukulele today. It's magic. It makes you seem much bigger if you tell people it's a full-size guitar. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Mike has done a lot of voice work uh, on uh, Fallout. He's been around. He'd done Fallout 3. You were a gob. And all the ghouls, actually. All the male ghouls. And uh, you owned a bar, did you not, in Megaton? Moriarty, hi, that's me. Your name, sir? Uh, Colin Moriarty. I see. Yeah. And uh, I, I guess your best customer is Mr. Burke, right? Could be. He's mm -hmm. got the caps. And uh, you were Professor Lesko? I, uh, yes, I am. Uh, actually, I, I, by golly, I was, yeah. How many people killed Professor Lesko? <laughs> God bless every one of you, please. Free me from this. Sorry about that, Mike. And, and who did you, who were you in Fallout 4? I was the voice of Radio Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't remember many of the lines except uh, like the Citadel is under attack and that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, now, when you came into the studio for Fallout 4, I was just leaving. Yeah. I had just done my session, and so we hung out. Look at that. What's going on there? Okay, it was all a lie. It was all a lie. It didn't happen that way. No, I, I, uh, I, I love working with uh, Bethesda. We've worked with other studios and done some other things, but Bethesda is like home to us. And uh, I love working with Mark Lampert, who's the sound director there, and I'm Mark, and uh, uh, all of the guys. Uh, in fact, I'm wearing a Swatters T-shirt right now. And uh, Emil and uh, oh, yeah. that's right. Uh, hey, get a swan and make sure you get the one with the nice hickory because it's got some good heft. <laughs> <laughs> but we got Brian and Emil and all these guys. They sent me this shirt and uh, they signed it. And, and all the developers who had done uh, Diamond City and uh, worked on the Silver Shroud that I had done all this, signed this shirt and sent it to me and I was very moved. And I left it out in the living room and I put it there and I was like, oh man, I'm gonna get this framed. This is beautiful, I'm never gonna wear this at all. And then my wife came through about an hour later, saw it and threw it in the wash. <laughs> <coughs> So uh, the signatures are all still there. They're just a bit more subtle than they were at the beginning. So thank you guys for the shirt. And sorry, guys, for my wife's cleanliness. It's like Oscar and Felix around the house. So um, I, I love doing it. How many people remember me from, uh, say, the Elder Scrolls? Do you go back to Morrowind? Ah, uh, yes, we've been expecting you. Come right in. Tell me a bit about yourself. Someone takes your sweet roll. What would you do? <laughs> Beat him. How many people would murder somebody for taking their sweet roll? <clears throat> You're a violent lot. A violent lot we have here today. Uh, I love that one, but the thing is, I played, uh, it was back when we were doing only the races, and so uh, I was all of the Bretons. 
And the only picture I'd seen was Cersei Sergala, who, uh, Cersei Sergala, who was the first person coming in. Uh, he was uh, based after Ken, one of the devs, and he had the goatee and the bald head, so I based the voice on him. Then every Breton became that way. Every Breton sounded like an old, bald man, even if they're young. <laughs> And I was working with uh, Todd Howard on that session, and I asked, I said, uh, so we're going into fight, what are the Bretons like? And he said, well, they're very magical, they're, they're, they're feet. I said, are they warriors? Oh no, they're not really warriors. And, and so my thinking is, well, every time they get hit with a sword, they're gonna scream like little bitches, right? <laughs> and so they did. If you take a Breton and hit him with a sword, they're all like, oh, oh, stop, oh, oh. <laughs> And people go into the game and they get there, they've got their PC because, you know, Morwind was PC to begin with. And they start loading up this character and it's like, I'm going to be a mage, a mighty mage. My mage will be undefeated. He'll be macho. He will be the ultimate bastard. Suddenly it's like, oh, ah, oh don't hit me. <laughs> so there was, a, there was a little mod going around, replace Wes Johnson as the voice of the Bretons. And so when I came back to do Oblivion, and that was the first time I worked with Mark, he's like, let's try some different voices. And I started doing the Imperials and had a really good time with it and was doing the regular citizens, doing the, uh, the, the guards, halt criminal scum, and had a really good time with that until it came time to do one character. And all of them are sounding the same. The gray fox sounds a whole lot like the guards who sound a whole lot like a farmer and all of his kids, you know. <laughs> it's hereditary, it works. So um, Mark looks over and he says, this guy's a little different, he's a little more evil, he's very dark and he runs an assassin's guild, maybe we can play with this a bit. And I thought, okay, good. So in my mind, I imagine this guy, bent, decrepit, gaunt, his hair stringing from the sides, the stuff that's left is stringing from the sides with the dark circles under his eyes. And in my mind, that became Lucien Legendre's dear child of Sithis. And so then they put him in the body of Benjamin Bratt and made him gorgeous, you know. <laughs> which every woman suddenly loved. It's like, oh my God, he's the heart of darkness, the epitome of evil, and he's gorgeous. I love him. <laughs> so, but it was great, it changed everything up. And what was great about that is it changed things up about the game, because suddenly here is this voice that's different from all the others, and he really stood out. And people liked that about him, and he became kind of a popular character. And not only that, because people really responded to that, it caused them when they created the first DLC, the Shivering Isles, to decide to open it up to many different voices and not do the diff just the, the different races. So um, we ha I came back and did about six or seven different characters in the Shivering Isles, one of which was Shea Gorath, who is my favorite character of all time. <laughs> Lucian and Shea Gorath are like my twin children. I don't want to say who I love more, but they, this was the first time that Bethesda, and Mike, you can, you can admit, uh, tell us about this. When you get a script, you really don't know what you're doing until you come in, and you've got to stack this high of pages, and it's like six different characters, and they tell you a bit about each one, so you improvise the character. Having a background in improvisational comedy, working with character building, helps an awful lot. So, uh, this is the first time they sent me information who this guy was. They wanted me to do a Robin Williams kind of thing, but I thought Robin was, too sweet, too gentle. So I went with more of, I said, well, if you want a stand-up comedy uh, icon who's a little dangerous, let's try Billy Connolly, you know? So then I thought, I don't want him to have just one accent or voice. The voice can remain similar, but I want his accent to be all over the place. So we went with Scottish when he's more angry or more manic and doing more of a Billy Connolly kind of thing, but then he swings over to Irish. And I know these people from the Irish Channel. Over uh, when I go to do Caps games, occasionally I'll head over. And there's a fellow by the name of Tom Stack, and he's from Cork, Ireland. 
And I love these people because he came to me one day and he's like, Wiss, I know you love the Macallan, but I got a drink for you. I think it's much more smooth. It's, it's just as good. Now, it's a blended whiskey. It's Irish. It's called Red Breast. Already I'm intrigued because I'm thinking I rock the red. Why not rock the red breast? So, um, and I'm going, well, you say it's as good as it's a 12-year-old. You need to try it sometime. I said, I'll, I'll do that. No, no, I'll tell you what. Bring us out a couple. Bring them on out. Now, if somebody who owns an Irish pub comes to you and brings you out a shot of whiskey, and he tells you, it's the greatest thing you'll ever try. The smart move is, once you try it, even if inside you're going, oh, yes. You got to go, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, Tom, you may be full of it. I don't know if it's something. What? You got to be crazy. Bring us a couple more. <laughs> so, you try it again. If you come out with less than three shots, which I did, you've done it wrong. And uh, so red breast is actually very good, but it's very nice. But I decided to use a little bit of Tom Stack, a little bit of uh, uh, Billy Connolly, and I then just sway between it and take my own sort of feeling into it with Shea Gorath. And uh, at first, Todd Howard wasn't sure. He liked it. It was way too different. But they went back. The first person they were going to use to play Shea Gorath, and they actually recorded, was Jeff Baker. And Jeff is a remarkable voice actor. I've worked with Jeff. Uh, he used to do radio and do characters on the radio back in the day. And I used to work with him at Comedy Troupe years ago, and we'd get up there and have fun and get on stage at an old place called DC Space, which is late and lamented. But uh, Jeff, they decided they wanted him to do Haskell instead, and it was brilliant. Jeff as Haskell was brilliant, and me as Shagorth all over the place, and Jeff just as calm and borderline condescending as he could be. <clears throat> so it worked out very well, and after he listened to it for a while, Todd, it grew on him. And I'm grateful for that because Shea Gorath was one of my, I mean, I was very disappointed when they decided to take a West Coast actor instead of bringing me out to the West Coast or using ISDN and just play some of my voice tracks for him and say, copy this guy, you know, which he did. Now, the voice actor in ESO, it's a little different from what I do, but it was close enough for me to listen and go, did I voice something I forgot? <laughs> and it turns out I didn't. Uh, but J.B. Blank is a very good voice actor, and I don't hold it against him one little bit. However, I've come back as Shea Gorath with Legends, ESO Legends, which is a card game. Have you played that online? Yeah. Yeah. Just download it. Good for you, sir. <laughs> Once every month, Shea Gorath comes in, and they open the Chaos Arena. And one of my favorite things happens, I normally do the arena announcer for... Uh, I did it in Oblivion, and one of the funny things that happened, I do the announcing for the Capitals, and then I go in and the guy says, do what you do for the Capitals, but put it on steroids. <laughs> I want it to be for gladiators. So I started doing it for gladiators and started adding a little more and bringing it up, and I thought, this is fun. So I started bringing some of that to the Capitals games, <laughs> and it started working out really well. <clears throat> so I then took that even a little farther. And the next thing you know, we're unleashing Fury. Uh, I, I mean, I really am just like a big fan, except I get a microphone. So <laughs> that works out really well. I can always be louder than anybody in the house except for Goat, who can be as loud as me without a microphone. So, and, and, he, and this never happens to him. I only end up losing my voice at MAGFest every year. And it's not because of being... Not because of being in here or being on the panels. It's out in the hallways trying to talk to people afterwards. And you're going, I, I can't really yell so you can hear me because I want to lose my voice. And they go, what? <laughs> I can't really yell. So and then yet you don't happens. want to teach someone opera. Well, no. <laughs> because they'd sound just like Peter Brady, like I just did. <laughs> So, what we're going to do here, we have approximately yell off to see who's louder. 20 minutes remaining.
We need a now, decibel Now, I have to tell you meter. that this panel officially ends at 1 in the morning. And then something will happen once we've turned the camera off and you guys go bye-bye. And we will do a little something here that's a little bit different and a little bit fun. And I wish that you would, uh, if you would like to stay and enjoy, you can. But it's not for those who are A, faint of heart, or B, underage. <laughs> How many people here uh, are under the drinking age? Raise your hand. No, you're How not. many of you who are under the drinking age have been drinking this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> Same hands going up. Um, okay, we'll, we'll work things out. How many people here are under 13? One of the, no, you're not. No. Maybe maturity-wise, but no other way. Uh, so, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to open this up for a few questions for either me or Mike or uh, somebody else. If you want to ask questions about John or Jan or uh, Farad, you know, we'll answer for you, Farad. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, so, any questions? Anybody? Come on up to the mic. Or any answers. Yeah, we're, we're very short on answers tonight. Any rags, any bones, any bottles? I, I apologize if this is better saved for later, but could I get a prank call from Shia Gorath? A prank call? It depends. Who, who, who are you calling? Uh, a friend of mine who loves Shia Gorath, so this isn't torture. What is their name? Bryce. Her name is Bryce. Bryce. Her name is Bryce. I want, like that. Do you want any other hooks to, to go off We can of just go with Bryce. Bring the phone on up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Is Bryce asleep? No, no, I checked that. I'm just going to hit call. Will that go to Bryce? Uh, yes. How do you turn this to speaker? Uh, you dial it and turn it to speaker and hand it over to me. You got it, boss. <coughs> Is it on speaker? Okay. Hello. Is this Bryce? Uh, this is Bryce. Bryce at Shea Gorath, Daedric Prince of Madness. I'm calling to find out if you'd like me to skip rope with your entrails. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bryce, I'm sitting here with about 500 of my closest friends. <laughs> And we all want to know, as you're sitting there tonight, close to one in the morning by yourself, are you wearing pants? <laughs> I, am, I am afraid to report that no, I, I am not, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to ask you then, is that an acorn sitting on a duffel bag, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> Sir, happiness fails to adequately describe the cocktail of emotions that come with interacting with your grace, your highness, your sir. I love your lion little tongue. I may pluck it from you when we're done. And by the way, keep it clean. There's a very overgrown 13-year-old out here. <laughs> yes, Lord Prince of Madness. What did you say to me? Uh, yes, Lord Prince of Madness. <laughs> this, this. Oh, you shouldn't have touch on that, Bryce. Ta-ta. <laughs> you know... If we had a pizza place around here, I should do what Ice and Jam did and basically just call and try to order a cheese pizza. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our good friend of the stage, Duke Nukem, John St. John. I've had far too much tequila to be here. Did, did you bring some with you? Huh? Did you bring any with you? Yes. Oh, no. Vernita's carrying up to our room now. Damn it. Because she said, you've had enough already, <laughs> asshole. That's okay. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! 
We're just going to tuck the uh, Nika coffee grain Japanese whiskey aside for a while. Oh, my. <laughs> okay, now, if I, say, if I become too obnoxious, y'all tell me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> if he becomes too obnoxious, you just applaud and cheer. <laughs> Now, I know this is the first time you've all worked together as an audience, so I want you to try a couple things here. First of all, let me hear your raucous applause. Now, now, let's take it down and give us the polite golf applause. Oh, is that the golf clap? Yes. If you ever get the golf clap, a little shot of penicillin will clear that shit right up. I'm just saying. <laughs> Unless, of course, you've already got the dimpled balls, and then it's too late. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Golf choke. Oh, Golf thank choke. God. Can I borrow this? Go for it. I've shaken too many hands tonight. <laughs> That's I why the gloves. I my nose. I got some boogers that are bothering the <laughs> shit out of me. You got to be careful. If you shake hands with the people out there who have the mag disease, then you pick your nose, it goes right to your brain. <laughs> oh, that's scary. <laughs> so what's your name, sir? Hi, I'm Matt. Hi, Hi Matt. Matt. I don't really have Hey, any. are you drunk yet? Because. Zero, zero to ten? 8.5. I'm fucking drunky skunk here, man. <laughs> He's already pissed his chair. It's, <laughs> it, it's true. I'll shut up now. I apologize because this isn't even a funny question. I was just curious if the SAG AFTA uh, strike uh, messed with your guys' work at all. Well, a little bit. Yeah. yeah, it didn't work for about a year, but uh, you know, we were able to get so much out of it, so I guess that was worth it. I won't cross a picket line. I'm not a scab. <laughs> no. I won't do it. Uh-uh. I won't fucking do it. I'm not going to fuck over other voice actors because of this shit. Yeah. Unless. It's consensual. <laughs> Unless it's consensual and it pays over union scale, in which case, <laughs> fuck them. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello, what's Hello. your name? Okay. All right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, shh, John snapping. <laughs> Wait, help me up. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Wes. You're welcome. I love you, man. You were asleep for over half an hour. Was I? Yeah, wow, right? Wow, that went fast. <laughs> what panel is this? Uh, this is Wes Johnson's Late Night Weirdness, and it just lived up to its name. Hey, you didn't come to my sexy, naughty late night I was party. there. You were there? Lobster trap. I, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is a lobster trap? Anybody, any ladies out there sitting on their lobster trap right now? It's a vagina. <laughs> yeah, I, li- I like the guy who asked whether or not it was when you use a finger on each side and pick somebody up like a bowling ball. No. Right. You know what? I had a friend once who told me that he said, he said John, I'm going to tell you honestly, I have a small dick. And, and just out of nowhere he said this? And, I'm what were you, like at a drive through or something? And he was with... <laughs> And he was with a woman who was kind of loose. So he said, when you have a small dick and you're with a woman who's really loose, you just work one side at a time. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? (laughs) You going to name any names? John, come back. John, come back. Tequila! Water. Oh, thank you. I need water. So, can you open that for me? (laughs) Hydrate. Hydrate. Oh, I'm so embarrassed right now. Not. No, it's okay, (laughs) but they're filming so you can see it back later. I know you. (laughs) Hi, John. Wait, wait. She just won the. You got your trophy with you? She just won a trophy at my sexy nutty late night party because she's the sexiest woman around. All right. My girlfriend's not here right now, so ask anything you want. So what, what is your name, sexy woman? 
with the t-shirt that says you're the world's okayest dad. <laughs> oh, that's fucked up, man. My name's Kara. <laughs> What's your name? Kara. Hi, Kara. Hi. What's your question? So, in your son's short, the one with like the unidentified stain, the yes. kids show one, on the back of his sketchbook, was that a dark yeah. hand, brotherhood handprint on it? I believe it might have been, yes. Awesome. <laughs> Can I use this? Please do. <laughs> and your name, sir? My name is Greg. Greg. Oh, hi. hi. Hello. Um. <laughs> coming to my also own Also a father-themed shirt. Hmm? <laughs> It smells like vodka. He does this during his alone time as well, just saying. Hey, man. Hi, John. How What's are What's your you? question? Hey. Oh, I know you. You do. <laughs> hey, this guy was the, you got a trophy too. I did, yeah. At my sexy, nutty late night party. What did you do? Congratulations. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> you tell me when I talk again. <laughs> now, what was it? What was it? Another father-themed hmm? t-shirt. Two in a row. What was that? So uh, you're father of the year, but that was the world's okayest dad. No, I'm only father of the year part of the year. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. What part? And the rest of the time, what? You're Bing Crosby? <laughs> Wait, is that Farad? Yes. What the, <laughs> what the fuck? Do you go to every fucking panel? <laughs> Dude, get a life. He, he, was, he was at your panel, but he wasn't allowed to bob for dildos, so he came over here. Uh, okay. You guys think I'm making that shit up. It's all true. It really is. So you, you you did have a question, yes? I did, yes. So for the three of you on stage, I guess as uh, kind of a proper question, what uh, what's your favorite alcoholic drink? <laughs> your favorite alcoholic drink? Tequila, and I've had so much tonight that I don't need any more. <laughs> My girlfriend just told me that as she went up to our room to put <laughs> shit away. You know, he loves tequila so much that he goes to bars, put on the big wooden shoes, and dances, so. <laughs> <laughs> Naked. <laughs> I love a good scotch. I love uh, McAllen I like. That's I love the red because you're not diabetic like me. You get to drink the good shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fucker. Sorry. <laughs> I'm a little jealous. Uh, look, at this point, you're almost already in a coma, so have one with me. Hey, you know, a piece of chocolate cake would probably put me in a fucking diabetic coma right now. Oh, he sent to make sure he found you. Yes, he did. Adam, look, I Hi. love you, man. Hi. Hi. I'm not trying to He's awesome. He's, he's MAGFest staff, Adam Bullock. Let's hear it for Alan Bullock. He's MAGFest royalty. This fucking guy saved my ass tonight. All right. You're clapping for me, but I'm really nobody. You need to be clapping for this guy and these three. Like, oh. you, you're off. You're I off. don't need to clap. I've already had it. <laughs> Mike Rosson, what's your favorite alcoholic beverage? My favorite alcoholic beverage uh, is a beverage that contains alcohol. <laughs> Now, here's one thing you don't know. Mike Rawson does the world's best Barney Fife impression. Oh, my God, it's so good. So I want you to be Barney Fife, stand up, walk over here, <clears throat> and put Otis the drunk in his cell. That would be me. Here. What the fuck do you want, Barney Fife motherfucker? Well, what we got here is a failure to communicate. <laughs> Let's just give you a little sobriety test. Now, I want you to take your finger and put it up your nose. No, not that far. 
Now we're gonna lock you up in the cell, but first we're gonna have a shakedown. Shakedown, everybody, shakedown. There you go. You Is take it shake- from here, Andy. <laughs> well, thank you, Barn. <laughs> Well, I had him dead to right. Oh, no, we need to plug Voice of Palooza tomorrow. You like what you're seeing up here so far? Tomorrow at 530, which is exactly 15 minutes after John wakes up. (laughs) Probably. We we are going to have Voice of Palooza. I think it's 9. Voice of Palooza 9? Wait, don't tell me it's at 9 a.m. I'm not going to do that. We did that once before when we had the very early voice actor panel, and John had a Saturday night similar to this. <clears throat> in one sec, let me make a point. Had food so, John, no, this is a different one. Oh. This, John came in, and we had, this is the first time Ellen was there, and uh, we had John Patrick Lowry, and we're all I love the those panel. guys. And you came in wearing the sunglasses, looking like Tim Allen at the beginning of Galaxy Quest. <laughs> And I looked out at the crowd, and I saw John, I said, ladies and gentlemen, John St. John has arrived. Let's welcome him with a giant Colossus Roar welcome. Fuck you. Don't do that shit. Don't fucking do it. (laughs) As John made his way up to the table, I swear I saw a little blood trickling out of his nose and ears. You bastard. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, Voice of Palooza is voice actors behaving badly. That's what we do best. And we're going to be doing uh, different movies, and I'll give you some of the ideas of some of the movies that we will be performing using character voices that we know, that we have done, that we're kind of known for. And we're going to be doing uh, the... um, Spoiler alert. What what was it, artist? Uh, no, well, Jan Johns will be there. We're gonna have I Alexander Brandon will be there. Phil Morris is gonna be there. Right. And cool. Yeah, and it's gonna be John and me and Mike. And one of the movies we're gonna do is the uh, oh, what is the movie out with James Franco right now? The something artist. <laughs> the disaster artist. We're gonna do a couple of scenes. James Franco plays a uke, by the way. He does play a uke. Yeah. Dude, I'm gonna so fuck that up. I'm so well, bad. Oh, it'll be great. It'll be no, great. No, I'm going to fuck it up right Guardians bad. of the Galaxy 2. Oh, that's my favorite movie. Is it? Well, after The Incredibles, yeah. All right. Do the you guys Incredibles like The Incredibles? That's my favorite movie ever. And then we're going to do a musical for the first time. Do I get to sing? You can sing. Fucking A. Now, but here's, it's going to be Beauty and the Beast. Now, Jan Johns at her panel today, I heard singing and I, my jaw dropped. Oh, she she's, can sing she like can an sing. angel. So she's going to play Belle and she's oh. going to sing and you're going to hear that. And I want the beast. I'm thinking giant, you know, beastie cat creature to be played with the voice of Big the Cat. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, man. Just fuck you, okay? <laughs> Well, you said today in the voice actor panel, you wanted a chance uh, at a redo at Big the Cat. Yeah, yeah. So I would give him a less stupid voice. That's so, for sure. so Big the Cat as the Beast. Yeah, or we're going to have Duke in there somewhere. That could be good. We're going to do some of the greatest movie quotes and, and speeches of all time in different character quotes, and we're going to create a video game from scratch from your suggestions. You create the characters. You create where we are, what we do, and it's normally the biggest fucking mess you've ever seen well, and a great time. fucked up, man. A good time guaranteed. That's going to be fucked up. Right? It's gonna, it will be guaranteed. So who's coming? <laughs> Bring your friends. You got to come to Voice of Palooza. It's one of the must panels of MAGFest. Oh, and I'm going to bring something special to Voice of Palooza this year that's never been done before. Should I spoil it or not spoil no, it? No, don't spoil it. Okay. But, no, I can't spoil it because it's Wes's panel, and I promise I won't. But something that you've never heard at Voice of Palooza before that's going to blow your fucking minds. I promise. Oh, wait, my phone's ringing. Oh, you got it. Wait a minute. John's got a call. Can you take it so everybody can hear it? Wait, let's see. Oh, shit. Never mind. 
It's a fucking solicitor call. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So who do we have here? We have only a couple more questions, and then we're going to move on to the cutting the video. And those of you watching at home will never know what happens here. Hi, I'm Zach. Hi, Hi Zach. Zach. Hi, Zach. Nice to meet you, uh, Zach. Hi. Wes, I was hoping uh, my friend Connor couldn't make it tonight, and I was really hoping, because he loves Oblivion, if you could do the Oblivion guard spiel, but direct it at him. At who? At Connor. Carmen? Connor. His, Connor is his name. Connor. Connor. Where's Connor? What, on the phone? No, I'm going to video it and do the Oblivion. Well, thing. okay, I'm going to start with this, and then Duke Nukem's going to jump in. Well, I have and, a question uh, for him, though. No, no, I have a different voice for him, though. <coughs> oh. Is, is that okay? Well, come up close. Okay, well. Come up close. You may approach the bench. It's Connor. <laughs> Sidebar. Say when. Oh, criminal scum! Your stolen goods are forfeit. Drop the fucking fork or pay with your blood! Bye. Turn this way. Oh, over here. Or I'll rip your head off and shit down your neck. <laughs> Come. Yes. Come as sort of the. Oh, say when. <laughs> Come as sort of the brain, and I've got a. What? <laughs> do it again. Do it again. Why? Okay. <laughs> say when. Come as sort of the brain, and I've got a headache. <laughs> now, now you say it is Barney Fife. Huh? You say the same thing as Barney Fife. Well, you know, your cum is stored in your brain, and I've got a headache. <laughs> ah, a gentleman with a capital sweater. Come on up here. What's your name? Wow, Capitals fan. Dude, right here. Woo! Hi, I'm Alex. Hi, Alex. Hi, Alex. I have a quick question for Wes. When you did the voiceover work for the protect protectrons have had a few for yeah. uh, fallout is that your natural voice or was there modulation well there's a slight bit of modulation and of course the voice is seeming a little weird but uh you know audi partner it's this kind of thing and it moves up and down why are and you touching your larynx right now? <clears throat> because when you have a little bit of a cold you can touch it here can i do that yeah go ahead <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> Did I do it right? Oh, yeah. All right. So, yeah, it's, it's, it, a lot of it is me, but there is a bit of a modulation on it as well. I love those characters. Little robot bastards killed me. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's pretty bad when you get killed by your own characters when you're playing the game. It sucks, doesn't it? It's like, bro, I thought we had a thing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, what's your name? Yo, I'm Alex. Yo, I'm Alex. Hi, Alex. Thank you for coming. Hello, yo, I'm Alex. Oh, thank you. I am very happy to have arrived. All right, well, let's go sit down now. <laughs> Dude, like, I don't even remember what I was going to ask you. Like, <laughs> like, what's up? How you guys doing? Yes, you can come up here and give him a hug. You know, it's very intimidating. Ask him. Like, don't know. With hug, the lights like... behind you, I'm being grilled here. Ask him his fuck Frank. Fuck fat fuck. Fr Wait. Fat fuck Frank. I'm Wait. supposed to ask you about a fuck ask Frank him or if something. Fat fuck Frank has had enough to drink tonight. Has fat? Who is fat fuck Frank to begin you, with? What? Oh, you're going to find out. What? Stick around. <laughs> All right. You're gonna find out, motherfucker. All right, guys, cut the video feed. Good night, everybody. Say good night.